we were planning on talking about goat breeding in today's video, and then we came out. Oh yeah, look at him. <laughs> look at that. Totally a, totally a breeding there. And the goats were breeding. <laughs> For the first time, we haven't seen them. We've seen signs of it, but this morning some breeding was happening, so. Whoa, <laughs> farty goat over here. I think he just coughed. He coughed and farted. It came oh, out of both ends. That'll be sure to impress the ladies there, Quinn. Give him the smolder. There goes Boba. Oh yeah. Hi you. All right, handsome devil you. Interesting, yesterday's video I mentioned I was watching Lacey's tail. It looked like she was flagging. Her tail was up and up a lot more than usual, kind of doing this. And I said, ah, oh, looks like she's maybe coming into heat. And she was jumping up on me. Now she wanted food, so she was also just kind of like hangry. But uh, sure enough, today, Quinn's out here. He's breeding. Right now, something's going on there. He's prepping himself. Oh yeah, he's definitely prepping himself. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting it all over his face. They pee all over their face. He's giving the smolder. The lip. Yeah. Do your best goat smolder. Go Get the mustache, it'll probably come across pretty good. Hey ladies. <laughs> they pee on their face and then they do the smolder. Hey, come here often. But we came out this morning and Lacey's tail's all gooped up. And uh, that's a sure sign that there's been some breeding, and then we actually got to see them breeding. God, which is better than what we were expecting. Nobody looks good at harsh so You can tell something's going on goat-wise, because Quinn's not bothering us at all. Like, when he's in with the girls and they're just running away from him the whole time, he eventually turns to us and is like, anything over here? But right now he's like only got eyes for Lacey. A little gizmo too. Oh my goodness, don't be so ambitious with your stuff. I told you it's heavy. I love this shovel. Yeah, this is my favorite. It's a hobbit shovel. Hobbit shovel. Actually, I actually think I'd leave him out tonight. It's not really that cold. As you know, with our cows, want to not walk behind me and make me look like a bad husband? Want to talk? Sure. Let me just... As you know, with our cows, we like to do, uh, we're proponents of AI. We've talked a lot about Why how AI is a nice choice for a family cow owner because it allows you to not own a bull, which can be dangerous, can be a lot of extra work, expense, all that stuff. And we, we were able to successfully breed our cow with AI, so great. We wanted to do that and it worked. Now we're working with Luna, which you'll see more this week. When it comes to goats, we have always done things more traditionally. We've owned bucks. We've owned bucks and we've also taken our does to the bucks to be bred. We've, we've had, what would you call it on a farm? Not a one, a one stall stand? <laughs> Hookups with other goats. We've had leave your goats. We've had leased bucks. We've let our girls stay at places. So we've kind of done it all. If you want to breed your goats, your which goats without if AI, you want milk from your goats. You will have to breed them. There's a few different options. Uh, you can plan to just have. We did one day where we brought a goat into a trailer with a buck. We gave them an hour and then we left. We showed up to Happy Acres, and Robert and Liz had. Herc ready and waiting for Toledo. This was the first blind date I'd ever gone on. I was pretty excited. <laughs> if your blind date tells you I'll be the one standing next to the red livestock trailer, run. That one didn't work. That was not successful, no. No. Uh, mm, maybe because the goat, the doe herself had issues. We don't know if maybe she was cystic or what the underlying health issues were there. Anyways, that was not successful for us. Doesn't leave you a lot of room for error either. Yeah. So you kind of got to time that perfectly. So that one I would say is the worst idea. It also only cost us, like we let them borrow our disc butter. So fortunately we didn't spend too much money on that meeting. 
The next thing traditionally you can do is kind of leave your does on a farm that has bucks. You leave them for a couple of weeks and you're gonna pay for the stud service and you're gonna pay for the kind of room, room, room and board, board. yeah, there. feed and all that sort of thing. And we wound up usually spending about a hundred bucks on the buck service plus room and board. Plus generally the bucks owners, the farm will want to see like uh, vaccinations of your does or that they've passed some some yeah. testing to make sure that your does are healthy and aren't bringing any diseases onto their farm. And you want to make sure that they have a clean herd as well. So that can be, that's kind of a hard thing to find and to figure out. That's one of the more complicated aspects of this all is if you have a clean herd, making sure wherever you take her is gonna be clean as well. After leaving your does, there's leasing a buck, which is what we're currently doing. And I think leasing a buck isn't bad either. If you have to deal with the stinkiness and the, you know, head buddiness of a buck, at least it's only for the amount of time you need him. And uh, then he's on his way and you can either bring him back next year or you can find a new line to bring into your herd. So that's been good. Also, prices are gonna vary. Price buck is going to vary a buck fees as well as bucks are a good buck is a precious thing to a goat herd. It may be hard to find a breeder who trusts you enough to let that to let you bring their precious little boy home and <laughs> breed your girls to. It's something you definitely need to plan in advance. Yeah, obviously the. The final option is owning your own buck. We've talked about this kind of concept before. Keeping yes. one male of any animal on your homestead for just a couple females and like one litter or kidding or whatever animal you're talking about, the economics usually don't work for you to own just one on like two females with only one breeding yeah. because usually it's gonna cost you more to feed and care for that animal year round than you'll ever make up for having your own and not having to pay a stud service. In addition to just the cost of keeping and feeding a buck, they're also notoriously hard on your property. So mm -hmm. your fences, um, small children, you know, you don't want, want them to go in with the buck when he's feeling ready. Not all bucks, but just as a general rule, bucks are going to be harder to keep own than a couple of does will be. Things kind of creeper right now. The, uh, when you look at the four different options available, my personal favorite is dropping off the does. Gives you a little bit of a vacation from your animals, which, you know, taking a vacation is always nice. As long as you know the farm is safe, there's good management there, uh, the girls are going to be cared for well and all that, there's a really high chance of that working. When we did that, the whole doe drop off thing, our girls both came back bred. One of them had, I think, twins, and the other, I think, had quadruplets. We had four kids. So that's a great option, lower cost, good option overall. Did you clean this room over here? Doesn't look too bad. I, I think it's always, if you're going to lease an animal, there's that worry, because it's not your animal, yes. that you're not going to take as good care of it as the person, something could happen. There's just that worry. 
And when you drop your goats off, I know for me, when I drop my goats off, I don't worry, as long as I know the facility is good and the person's good, I don't really worry too much trust about my them. goats. Yeah, I just think, all right, the worst that could happen is I own less goats. Kind of a sad, kind of a harsh way to put it, but okay. all right. I, I, we paid $400 for that goat. You're right, you wouldn't you're right. care I don't if she like, died die. at the no, breeder. No, I'm just saying the worst that could happen on the flip is we kill someone's precious animal and that's, I'd rather someone kill my precious animal than I kill someone else's precious animal. You know what I mean? Yes. That's like the That's truth That's a nicer right way there. to say it. If you have to pick as a homesteader how you're gonna breed your goats, I think that's the best way. Drop your girls off to a place that does a stud service, leave them there for a vacation, and then come and get them. I told you, so Marty. <laughs> it's all revved up. Our plans have changed a little bit since we got Quinn. What our goal was was to just breed Lacey, to keep the does separate from the bucks. So when the, when the breeding happened, the cold weather kind of made us change our plans a little bit. And wanting to get Gizmo bred now as well. Uh, she's a year old this month, which for some reason Austin and I both thought she was much younger than that. So when we found out she's old enough to breed, and especially with dairy animals, you're looking at their size, their weight, to see if they're ready to breed. She's big enough uh, weight-wise to breed. And so she's hopefully been bred. And even though we weren't planning on it, that'll mean we have three does kidding this year, hopefully. Yes. For boating. Three does. <laughs> That'll probably be in an upcoming video, maybe next week. Explaining what's happening. Hello. Speak of the gizmo. Hello. Little gizmo all grown up. I know. Remember when, when she was just a little thing just skipping Just a bottle baby. That's right, we bottle fed her. Yeah. Our little gizmo. Yeah, you're you're nice. Come on, handsome, show yourself. Come on, I know you're not afraid to jump. Don't be all coy and camera shy now. He's We're, been busy today. He's tired. He's, you're tired. You finally you're finally doing some work that I got you here for. That stinky car ride, all for one thing. Finally pulling your weight. We were looking this morning at the ADGA records for for Quinn, Quinn here. His mom. The his sire. Nope. His dam. We're looking at his dam's milking records. If you buy a registered animal that they've kept records on, you can see all the statistics of all the the milk production, uh, the milk fat. But just looking at his statistics and uh, what he's bringing to our herd. Lacey's dam was not superior genetics, so there's a little abbreviation you can see on their milk records to see if they have superior milking genetics. Her dam was not that. So Lacey's probably going to be, she was at a dairy, she was probably just your average, you know, dairy goat. Quinn comes from superior yeah. genetics and he's got some really good quality, his dam had really good quality, mm. had some really good numbers uh, showing that any does that come from his line might might turn out to be some really nice quality animals and certainly they'll upgrade Lacey's genetics. And that's kind of in the beginning stages of breeding our own. Our goal is not to create a perfect show animal, uh, but rather just find, uh, upgrade our herd's genetics so on average our herd produces good quality milk and a lot of it for our family and big bucks that are, uh, you know, meaty and don't worry Ooh. about you, buddy. Ooh, get the dogs out. Ooh, stink. Ooh, stinky dogs. Get out of here. Let's just think 
guess what we saw today? Lacey and Quinn. Red. Uh huh. So you know what you got to do. So that means we'll go right on the calendar and we'll count how many days. We'll see when we're gonna have kids. Better not be years. I think it's in June. What a perfect month. If you're interested in growing a goat herd of your own on your own homestead, there's a lot of bonus content about raising goats, making money with goats in the Pioneer Library. It's five bucks a month, you can click here to become a Pioneer, and instantly you have access to bonus podcasts, classes, interviews, all about raising goats and making money with goats. Click here to learn more.